Hey guys, welcome back to the Taekwondo Upgrade. As always, I'm Master Greg. Today we're talking about the system breakdown of Leota Machida. Um, phenomenal example of another guy who's a traditional martial artist who translated what he knew as a like high skilled karate master, um, raised in karate, his dad is a karate master, and took that skill set and translated the kickboxing and then MMA to really show the versatility of his traditional martial arts. And that's what we're gonna do today is talk about the system that he used to get there because you know, beginners learn type, uh, techniques. Intermediate students learn concepts. Advanced students should be learning systems. And we did a Wonder Boy system a few uh, last week that was really great. This is another example of a traditional martial arts system that can be very versatile. So it's a good one to break down. To begin with, a couple of things. Uh, let's just make it kind of simple here. Uh, man, there's a lot involved in this system, but once you get it down, it's not, it's pretty easy. It's just, it's a little bit to explain. So uh, I hope I do it justice. Um, to begin with, he mostly fights out of an open stance because he wants to be able to attack the body. The majority of his attacks are going to come from the rear side, either his rear hand punch or his rear foot kick. Kicks, he likes to slide right here underneath their guard, right where they're just a little bit open here. You'll see him connect with that a lot. Low roundhouse kicks and front kicks, just over the belt and just under the elbow. Why? Because in points bar, we're used to this, right? We're used to hitting that level. And this is an easy target that he'll catch a lot. He has to set it up, obviously. One of the advantages he has is because he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu, he's not afraid of getting taken down, so it makes him more free to throw these type of kicks to the body. Usually kicking to the body can be very dangerous because it can get you caught. You'll see it happens to him sometimes. His leg will get caught, he'll get taken down, but he doesn't care. One, he's a sumo expert. Uh, he's a very high level sumo guy. He's got a lot of experience with that. So he's very good at defending takedowns. If you do take him down, he's a jiu-jitsu black belt. So it gives him a lot of advantages and freedom to move. Hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more. You know, go learn some cross training. Go learn some jujitsu. Um, like I said, he fights out of an open stance because he wants to attack this side of the body, okay? His guard, usually he's gonna be in a karate guard, maybe a front stance or a back stance here. Backhand tends to be a little bit high. Front hand is a little bit forward. He paws out a lot with this hand because the front hand is very active. He does this for a couple reasons. One, he likes to have inside control, both in terms of setting up his strikes and also, if somebody attacks, he likes to guard up using this framing method, this open guard where his right hand comes high, left hand comes high, shin comes down. That's why he doesn't take a lot of damage to his face. But a lot of times this hand will also be up here where it's just here and he'll parry with this, okay? He does that also because this hand, he wants to have ready to throw that cross a lot. He uses it a lot as a counter. But the other reason he uses his front hand, going back to that, like I said, he's using it to open him up and maintain inside control. He also uses this as part of his fainting mechanism. He does a lot of feints to keep him at distance. So it's a lot of stomping, hip movement, threatening jabs, pawing a lot, keeps them very active so that they're constantly concerned about what's coming at them. And while he's fainting, he's also kind of simultaneously lulling them to sleep with constant, they don't know what's coming at them, but not a lot's coming at them. So they feel like they can't quite come in. They're not ready. Every time they come in, they get caught with something. And then they just kind of sit there and they fall asleep, right? Because there's, all this non-movement going on, and it's a technique to design to lower their guard. The other thing is, he'll actually raise their hands up using this, right? This pawing is to raise their hands up to make that body shot more accessible, okay? So this is a very important aspect of it. Like I said, he's gonna use this defensive inside position if he gets charged a lot. This is something you're gonna have to practice. He will also convert that a lot of times into the over-under clinch, which he uses very successfully, which means one arm is gonna wrap over the arm, one arm comes underneath. He looks for this a lot, partially because as he attacks, he might get it, clinch up, and do an outside trip to take them down. Um, sometimes he'll do it, return to this position, and then escape back out. If he gets put up against the wall, he'll get the over-under clinch, and he'll sh turn them and shut them off and go back to this. And he, like I said, he's low chin, high hands. And he uses a lot of circling to keep his distance, of course, just like you know Wonder Boy did. Uh, in fact, he's willing to circle one or two times around the octagon until they give up on that pressure and he can get, keep the distance that he wants. Now, in terms of dealing with pressure, he's got some great systems for that. If somebody comes in, he uses the cross for almost everything. He's very, very good at using a cross as a counter. Because he hangs out at this range a lot, people like to kick at him a lot. So what does he do? He lunges in, he catches him with the cross. It's very simple. He might throw a straight afterwards or pop, pop. and then right here, he guards up and he gets back out to his range that he's comfortable with. 
You'll see him do that a lot. Sometimes he'll work out at a corner and he'll cut an angle as he's doing this as well. So if somebody goes to throw a kick, whether it's a leg kick or a body kick, <coughs> right? And he cuts out until he can get free again. Very, very effective strategy. Like I said, from the distance, he's using a lot of feints, constantly keeping them guessing so that they're never sure what's going on. Um, this is really important because like I said, it lulls them to sleep. It also makes them afraid to move in. Even if they come in with punches, like I said, we talked about if he, they come in with kicks, if they come in with punches, he does the same thing. Inside control, throws this, or he'll back up. It's pretty simple. Uh, you just gotta practice it. Uh, aside from that, he's also really big on deception in his attacks. So, like I said, he faints and he lulls them to sleep. He also is very critical to not do a lot of telegraphing in his kicks. If you notice his kicks, it's all leg, right? You don't need a ton of like telegraphing in it to get power. From right here, right? He does this because that way, you know, right? They don't know what's coming. Sometimes you use this front hand to set him up, right? He's in here, getting up here, and then he's back out. This is a lot of his strategy right there, is just getting them to relax, making them pay the price every time they come in. Uh, as far as attacking goes, like I said, he does a lot of body shots. He does a lot of lateral kicks as well, where he does front kicks to a lot of boxers or flying front kicks, that crane kick. He does that a lot of times. He's had some good knockouts with that because boxers are very squared off. If you go back to my how to fight a boxer video, I talked about that where boxers are very susceptible to front kicks. He uses that really well. If they pressure in a lot, instead of doing this low kick to the body, he'll switch to a knee strike. And he's caught guys really hard with that knee strike as they try to pressure and if they keep too close. He knows he's at a range where if he steps in, he can't throw that kick. So right here, as they come in, right? And a lot of times, both the knee and the kicks, he'll follow with a straight punch with the same hand and get back out. That's really common. You'll see him do that a lot. He does have some other techniques that I've seen him do a lot where like he'll jab and step out um, you'll see him do that a lot. You'll also see him do a lot of going low to set up high. Um, he'll throw leg kicks and then follow it up with the high roundhouse a lot. Sorry, I'm not stretched out, so I'm not going to try to do it. Um, that's something you'll see him do a lot. Most of the time, though, if he's throwing this front side, whether it's leg kicks or jabs, he's doing it to keep a head on points in the round. It's easy stuff for him to connect that it's hard for him to defend because he stays out of range. And over the course of a round, he slowly picks them apart in points. So even if they come in and get four or five good shots on him, he doesn't care. He's going to control, keep his head protected here in this frame movement, clinch up if he has to. And then in the meantime, what he's going to do is he's going to pick them apart on points. So even if you get a couple points in here, over the course of a round, he's getting a lot of points on them by slowly, right? He will drop people sometimes with leg kicks, but the majority of the reason he does it is for points. Uh, so as you can see here, it's once again, just like Wonder Boy, you're staying at a range. Every time they come in, you make them pay the price. You evade out to stay free. If you do get uh, crushed or uh, pressure, you can cover up, you can clinch, or you can knee strike in. It's a pretty simple system. Um, let's see, I want to look at my notes here. That's why I put them up there. Uh, let's see, on the front kicks. A little bit high. Oh, aggressive situations. This is another one. I'm glad I put notes I didn't forget. Sometimes he has to keep them threatened, right? If all he does is retreat the whole time, eventually they're going to get impatient and come in on him. So he does the aggression, the aggressive attacks for two reasons. One is if he lulls them to sleep with occasionally throwing a kick and backing back out, right? All right. Sits back here. Right, his fights look like that for the most part. But every once in a while, guys get a little complacent. So what you'll see him do is he'll do a lunging cross, straight, and then a couple series of punches and get back out. He usually stays in for one or two, right? If he connects, he'll stay in a scramble. Most of the time, right, back out. If he connects, you will see him in a scramble. Man, scrambles, he just wins on accuracy. Uh, I've seen him do a lot of stuff where like, he's in here just kind of throwing punches. He keeps his head back. And he's just more accurate than them. That's just experience. 
Um, but also, he doesn't do that unless he's already got them on the fences a little bit, right? So if he comes in and he catches them clean with his knee strike and they're backing off, he feels more comfortable throwing these bombs at him because he's already got damage on them. He doesn't do it just out of the blue. Um, generally speaking, if he gets backed up and he gets caught with something, he's going to tie it up. He's going to clinch. Uh, that's generally his philosophy. His style, he, because he's so experienced, he does do a lot of variables. These are just blanket things that he does in his system so that if you understand the kind of base concepts, you can understand it where it's basically just, you know, fainting, lulling him to sleep, power kicks, occasionally charging in, countering him with that cross, you know, simple concepts that he has solutions for, easy solutions for things that happen a lot. But he's such an experienced guy that he'll periodically change it up and throw that flying front kick. He'll periodically change up his attack and do something totally different where he'll step to the outside, right? Why? Because he has a very, very high fight IQ. This is not the end all be all of what he does, right? This is just a blanket idea for the base system. But the base concepts, once again, hangs out, open guard, lulls him to sleep. Defensive strategy, he generally covers up, clinches a lot when he wants to as an exit strategy or if he gets pressured, throws the body, kicks underneath. If he wants to go to a high kick, a lot of times he'll go low first and then he'll catch him with a head kick. That's pretty common. Um, but that's the majority of it. He will occasionally throw back kicks and stuff like that, but it's to mix it up. And it's like attacks of opportunity because he's so high in fight IQ, he can get away with it. But for the most part, this is what he does right here. He sits, he maintains the range. If they come in, he catches them. If they start pressuring him a lot, he'll throw that knee, right? He circles out a lot. Constantly maintaining the range makes them afraid. One of the biggest advantages he has is they're afraid to move in on him because they know he'll catch him with a cross, he'll catch him with a kick, he'll catch him with a knee. But if you notice, like I said, it's almost all backside attacks. If he's fighting a southpaw, he'll go left foot forward and he'll do the same thing in reverse because he's ambidextrous, he's very skilled at that. Uh, that's really the majority of the system. It's super, super effective. Uh, I really enjoy watching it. I've been doing a lot of fight videos this last week or so where I probably watched 50 fights with him just to really make sure I understand it before I present it. But his system is pretty basic. It, the base concept of the system is this. So I want you to play with this, see how it works for you. You know, practice lulling them to sleep from here. You know, a lot of feints. And then catch a big shot and get back out, right? Here, as they come in. Right? Occasionally charge them to mix it up to keep them on their toes. The other thing he'll do is sometimes he likes to, he likes to attack people when they're not ready for it, right? That's why he lulls them to sleep with this. But sometimes when he gets a break in the action too, like they'll break, check something, and he goes, go. And as soon as they say go, he's on them because this is when they're not expecting it. And that's an experience thing is knowing when they're not ready for it. And he likes, he's very good at reading them. And this is a big part of this game where as this guy's fighting, right? Right? He gets to the point where he gets them thinking. And there's that moment where you can see that somebody's thinking and they're not reacting. And that's when he attacks to get them when they're not able to react very promptly. That's the whole point of this. Right? Just sitting back. That's the whole point of that system. Anyway, this is the majority of it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have other things that you think need to be added in, please let me know. Um, try it out. Let me know how it goes. I'm really interested to see how you guys are able to do implementing this system into your own game. All right, thanks guys.